Right, so the last component, uh, the basket one. Okay, after the visible, we're going to add a few more properties. Public property basket, by default, is going to be an empty array. Then we're going to have public property product, also an empty array by default. And then we're going to have public property total, which will be represented by decimal zero. Okay, let's just quickly add some dog blocks here as well. Array, and this one is a float. Okay, so uh, one other thing we need to do is to provide another listener for our basket updated method. When we are adding product to basket, obviously this basket also needs to be refreshed. So basket updated, and we will use hydrate method to make sure that it gets actually updated. So let's start with this hydrate method. Public function hydrate. And this one obviously is one of the hooks which is called every time the component is being uh, refreshed. So void on this one, hydrate component. And here we're going to start by setting this basket to whatever we have currently in the basket. So basket all. Next, we're going to set a product to, and we're going to use tab function here. A, this product, let's just put on new line, this product method, which we don't have yet. And then we're gonna go for arrow function, which takes products. And here we're going to go for this total, we're going to set to integer to decimal, we take products and sum method on it total because products returned from here will be an instance of a collection which we actually can type in so collection illuminate support collection okay and after this tab we just return to array because we uh, can only store these properties publish properties as uh, we cannot have it as a collection actually uh, i did try and it only works with with the array so um, that's our hydrate method. Let's now create this products one. Uh, so public function products. Actually, this one can be private rather than public, and it's going to return collection, get uh, products. And here we're going to start with if empty this basket, then we just return an empty collection, new collection. Otherwise, what we're going to do is return product where ID, actually, let's use in ID, and then array keys, we go for this basket, because keys of this basket array obviously represent the, the IDs of the product, then we're going to go for the get, so we fetch all the records, then we're going to map them function, we take product through each iteration. And here we're going to return and I want this as an object. And here we're going to say we're going to have ID, which is something we need product ID, then we're going to go for name, which is going to be product name, uh, we have price, it's going to be product price, then we're going to have formatted price, price, product, formatted price, then we're going to have quantity of that product in the basket, which is going to be quantity, I'm going to create a, a variable here because I need to reuse it as well, equals this basket, then we're going to go for product ID, that will give us this the associated value for that key, which is the quantity, and then we're going to have total, Total will be product price multiplied by this quantity. This is why we actually created this variable here rather than calling uh, twice to the array. We just have it available now as a variable. Okay, so we're going to have a total for that given product for uh, multi basically price multiplied by its quantity. Okay, so that's products. Let's now save it and see what we get in the browser. If I refresh the page, reveal the basket, uh, there's nothing here yet. And it's because obviously I've forgotten, we need to update the basket. At the moment, we're not actually displaying anything from within the 
uh, the products uh, array. So what we're going to do is use for else, and we're gonna go for this products s product, and then at the end after closing li we're gonna say empty when there are no products, and then and for else. And if there are no products, we're going to have li as well. Uh, and the same class, I'm just going to copy this. And on a new line, I'm going to say your basket is empty. And then we are looking through the products. So we're going to have a product name. So product name, we will have its quantity. So product quantity. Then we are going to have a uh, formatted price. I'm, I'm keeping pounds as a symbol for the currency. Uh, you can obviously use it however you want. You can change it. You can have uh, currency uh, configurable and that sort of things. I'm just having this hard code here as a pound. So product uh, formatted price. And the last thing, total, which we also have now available uh, because we obviously calculated it, uh, as you may remember here, using this arrow function, total equals, and we obviously get the sum of the, of the basket. Okay, uh, let's just do that. So this total, there we go. If we now save it all, and now before we test it in the browser, I've noticed that I've already made a typo here. This basket updated, I'm listening for this event, but if we go to uh, add to basket button, you can see we have here basket updates. I'm just going to update the name to update it and the same needs to go to basket button because here we are also listening for the basket update rather than update it. So if we save it, and now preview everything in browser. If we open the basket, you'll see that when I'm actually adding to the basket, the quantity for this given product is increasing and the total is also updating. Now, if I add more than one, there we go, that's also updated 18. Now, price obviously, uh, the total has been updated accordingly. Uh, obviously, minus and plus buttons aren't working, and uh, neither does this remove button. So, let's quickly have a look at this now. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, open my basket.blade.php and I'm going to bind the event handlers to this. Uh, so we have our uh, remove one, remove button. So what I'm going to do here on this remove button, I'm going to use wire, click, and on click we want to remove the product and we need to pass the ID of the product. So we're going to use blade curly braces and product ID. And then for the plus and minus on this minus one, we're going to have wire click. We're going to call event called decrease. And again, same thing, we need to pass the product ID, so product ID. And on the plus one, we're going to have wire click, increase. And again, we pass in the ID of the product. So product ID. Now going back to our, oops, sorry. Uh, that's not quite right, not quite right. Yeah, this is the method. So we don't need the SQL symbol. Okay, back to the basket. Now inside of the basket, we're going to start with the remove. Uh, remove, I'm gonna put right before the render method. So public function remove, it takes the the integer, which represents the ID of the product. It doesn't return anything, so void. Let's just add dog blocks simple, uh, quickly. So remove uh, product. And here we're going to have a basket. Get uh, function, remove. We don't have this method on the repository yet. We pass in the ID. And then lastly, we're going to have call to this update method, which again, we don't have yet on this component. So let's add this method here. I'm going to move it up. And it is not being called via the listener, so it can be a private method. Okay, and this one, again, void as well. So update or refresh, we should call probably, uh, no, update. Uh, basket, let's call it. Fresh void. Okay, so from within the update, actually, what we are going to do is simply emit the event basket updated. So this, uh, this emits and it's going to be basket updated. 
So now when this event is called, obviously our own component will also uh, refresh because we're listening for this event. And then what it's going to do is call this hydrate method and update, uh, basically get the fresh version of the basket with all the quantities and products updated. Okay, so our remove method on the repository. Let's go back to the uh, to the interface first. So we're going to start public function remove. It takes integer, the ID of the product, and it's a void for the return. We're going to say remove item uh, from the basket. Okay, so that's that. Let's now close this uh, interface, open our implementation. Let's add this method stop remove and we're going to use inherit docs. And here, what I'm going to do is simply remove this item from the session. So this session remove, and we go for this identity and the ID of the product. So if we now try and test it in a browser, if I click on the remove button, you can see that removes the products. If I add, still adds them obviously now it's time to have a look at at the moment as you can see obviously this is throwing the arrow when i click on a plus or minus uh, buttons so let's uh, dive into the code again and try to implement these methods so after remove to the update i'm going to have this public function increase and that one takes the integer id of the product as well void for the return and increase a product uh, quantity. So what we're going to do here is simply use basket and we do add ID and then this basket we go for ID. We're trying to find the current uh, quantity for this given product in the basket plus one. So that's in creates and then we're going to call the update method as well because we need to obviously re-render everything. Then we have the decrease method, so public function decrease as well integer id as an argument void for return decrease a product quantity. Now this one's going to be slightly different. Uh, in a sense that obviously if we are decreasing and the current quantity is one, then obviously we need to remove the product from a basket. So what we're going to do first is check if uh, quantity equals this basket uh, and uh, the quantity by product ID a, and we go for minus one is less than one then what we want to do is remove the product. So this remove and we pass the ID through as an argument. Otherwise, and I don't like using the else statement, but in this case, I think uh, this is quite okay. Uh, we're going to go for the basket again, and we're going to add ID and we pass the quantity that we are after. So basically quantity has been uh, obviously calculating this first if statement. So bus current quantity minus one, we pass it in and this add method will simply update uh, the, the the existing product if it already exists, uh, if, it or if it's already in a basket. Uh, and then as well, we need to call the update. We don't have to call the update from within this if statement because the remove automatically does it so after it removes the product it calls the update by dispatching this uh, basket updated event but when we are adding and uh, when we are decreasing just decreasing then obviously we need to call it manually okay so that seems it let's now test everything in a browser see how we're getting on with all this so if i click minus it decreases the uh, quantity. If I click plus, it increases. The total, total is also being calculated correctly. Now, if I go one and I click, that should remove the product, and it does. So add to basket, refresh, and it seemed to be working just fine. So this concludes this session. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or perhaps suggestions, uh, please use the comment section under the video. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching and speak to you next time.